everybody welcome back to the channel and if you're new welcome welcome i'm tanya with yanza creations and on this channel i absolutely love crafting and experimenting it's my two favorite things and tonight we're gonna be doing both again so in tonight's video we are going to be doing the dtf sublimation hack but we are gonna try to do it with a mini heat press so for all the videos I've seen and all the videos that I have done using the DTF sublimation hack, I have used the Cricut uh, Easy Press 2, the 9x9, I've used a 12x10, I've used my larger heat presses to get it done. So earlier today, I was watching a video from Making It with Marilyn, I love her videos, and she was going through the DTF sublimation hack. When I went down into the comments, I saw another crafty friend of mine, uh, my crafting and sewing diary and she was querying whether she could do this detail sublimation hack with a mini heat press so i am going to try that out tonight so usually with sublimation we want to use a press that is large enough so that we don't have to move around the press in order to get to cause that paper to shift and then we end up uh, not having a very good image but we're gonna see we're gonna try with the mini heat press to see if we can actually get it done. Now, for this process, this is one of those times when I would really, really advocate for curing the DTF powder. So if it is that you're going to use one of these heat presses or the Cricut uh, Easy Press, a nine by nine or a 12 by 10, you can add the DTF powder and just go ahead and press. But because we are going to be moving the heat press around, this is one of those times when we definitely have to cure it. So stick around. I'm going to go through the process. I'm going to show you the curing process. I'm going to show you the materials that we're going to be needing and how we're going to use the mini heat press. So fingers crossed that we can get it to work because if you only have a mini heat press, then we want you to join the fun. So for today's video, we are going to be using uh, the DTF film and the DTF powder from Waleso. So they sent me these things a couple of months ago. I did another video uh, using the film and the powder to sublimate on canvas. If you haven't watched it, it's going to be right here in the cards. Go ahead and watch it once this video is done. But I'm going to be using these two products and I'm going to have a container for my DTF powder. I'm going to be using this 100% cotton towel. You are going to be needing one of these mats. This is the HGV Rant uh, mat. And of course, you will need a mini heat press and a sublimation image. So I'm going to go ahead and use this image right here. That, of course, I got it from Creative Fabrica. Absolutely love that site. So I'm going to go ahead and send my image to the printer so we are printing directly onto the willace of film and they give you great instructions on the front here about which side to print on so i'm gonna go ahead and send the image to the printer and then we'll be back to powder it and we're gonna cure it everybody I'm i gonna... have my print here it is not too big and let's go ahead and quickly put on the powder let me just bring you down here can see everything I'm doing. So I'm using the Waleso DTF powder, and if the bag will just open, so the ink is nice and wet. Get everything. Okay, so. I'm not seeing any roller marks in the ink. All right. I do have a bit of ink on the film right here. So I'm just going to cut that off so it doesn't transfer. I guess I'll use that portion. All right. So I'm just going to pop it in the oven. My oven is set to 210. And we're just going to cure this for a few minutes. So here is my oven door opening. Going to just stick that right in there. 
Okay, it's all ready. It's nice and cured. Everything is nice and sharp. The ink is, sorry, not the ink. The powder is all melted. So I used to do this under my heat press and it would take a really long time whenever I do it in my oven around 210. It takes a few seconds to melt it down like this, just a few seconds. All right. So we are going to go ahead and prep to press. All right, we are ready to go. Um, as we said, this is cured. So I'm going to be using this mini heat press. It's from ECD and I got it on Amazon. I actually liked it. So I do have this one. I've had this one for years. And you just press, uh, when you switch it on, you have um, a light at the bottom, a light in the middle, and a light at the top to indicate uh, the specific temperature ranges. Uh, this one I do like because it does show you uh, what temperature you are working at. And this is saying 160 degrees Celsius, which is 320 Fahrenheit, which is the recommended temperature for pressing uh, the DTF film. All right. So we're going to do it at uh, 320. And usually it is recommended that you press for 20 to 25 seconds. I am using my timer. And I have set this to 50 seconds because we are going to be moving across the design. So since we're not going to be switching on the design for 25 seconds, um, all in one go, we're moving it across. I've set it for 50 seconds. So we're just going to see how this goes. All right. So because I'm going to be moving it back and forth, I am going to take this down and I am going to use the uh, Cricut Strong Grip Tape so that it will not move. So let's see if I can get this right. Uh, the direction, let's put it in the center just in case it turns out great, I can use this towel. It's a dish towel, so I'm just gonna set it. So I do have uh, some copy paper underneath here. The towel is a little bit thin, so I don't want this ink to go through. So I'm just gonna set it right on here. All right. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm just going to use the strong grip tape that Okay. That looks good. So I am going to put uh the sheet over it. So let me get my timer. And fingers crossed. Let's go. We hit start. And we want to give it a good amount of pressure. I'm just taking my time and moving it across it for that time, giving it a good amount of pressure. So this design actually does not require me to move it. I could do it half and half because of the size of it. But uh, I'm thinking what if you have a larger design, then you will need to be able to move it. So that's why I am actually making sure that I give it a lot of pressure and really move it around. Because... If you are doing a larger design, okay, there we go. For a larger design, you're going to want to move it around. So that's why I'm making sure to move it around. Okay. So we're going to let this cool off and see what happens. All right, we're back and it's all cool. So let's try and get this up. We just lift up this tape. It's good tape. Let's see if we can use it on another one. If it works. Oh, let's just try. Let's go ahead. Wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wow. Look at this. It is Perfect, perfect, no smudging. It did not move anything.
anything, everything is good. Just make sure to cure it and cure it really, really well. I am so excited. No damage to the image. Everything is absolutely perfect. Because of the size of this design, I could have just gone in half hair and half hair, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to move it around, move it around because if you have a larger design and if this is all you have, I wanted to show you that you could do it. So I kind of wish I had gone bigger. It would have been so much more exciting, but I think it all worked out. So I am excited about it. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and put my mat back underneath it. And I am going to give it that uh, final press. And I am going to be following uh, Marilyn's advice not to use butcher paper on top of it because it will pull off the ink. It has happened to me. She suggested to use parchment paper. So I am going to go ahead and do that second press. And I'm going to use parchment paper uh, to do that. So again, we are going to move around the press. We're going to move around the press. Okay. Of course, not overheating it and voila no sticking all right no sticking it is so in there look at it it's gorgeous it is gorgeous okay so as you can see both times that i pressed i was able to move that press around on the design and it is not smudged in any way all right but my two major pieces of advice in doing this is cure it properly do not put down the dtf powder and then try to press it with moving the heat press around i don't think i haven't tried it i should try it i will try it and let you know in the comments but i do think you will not have a good transfer because you that powder is going to be loose um underneath your um on top of your ink it's gonna be loose so give it a really good cure and um, go ahead and just to be safe, tape, tape your design down. I imagine you can use a uh, regular high temperature tape. I just want it to be safe. So I used the strong grip tape from Cricut to make sure that nothing shifted while I was ironing it. And you can move around in circles. Remember, add a good amount of pressure because this does require uh, medium to heavy pressure and that's about it so if this was useful for you if you've been wanting to try this and all you have is a mini heat press have no fear come on and join the party and let us do this dtf sublimation hack so if this was good for you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because we are going to be trying some holographic dtf film coming up okay we want to know if this holographic dtf film is gonna work with our sublimation ink so hit the subscribe button so that when th that film comes in and i do the video you will not miss it so thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next one